ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम गणानान्वा गणपति गुंहवामहे कविंकवीनामुपमश्रवस्तम ज्येष्ठराज ब्रह्मणा ब्रह्मणस्पता आनश्रुन्वन्नूतिभिस्सीद साधन श्री महागणाधिपत नम सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा आप्यायं तो मंगा वाक्णश्चिश्रोत्रमथो बलमींद्रिया चर्वाणी सर्व ब्रह्मषद माहं ब्रह्म निराकुरिया ब्रह्म निराकोद निराकरणमस्व निराकरण मे अस्त तदात्मन निरते य उपनिषत्सु धर्मास्ते मयि सन्तु ते मयि सन्तु ओम शांति 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 ही द सेवेंथ मंत्रा यू मे से विथ मी साय एषा अनिमा ऐ तदात्म्यमिद तत्सत्यम स आत्मा तत्वमशिश्वेतकेतो इति भूय एवमा भगवान् विज्ञापयतु इति तथा सोम्येति हो वाचा या सय एषः अनिमा सो the essential nature of jiva as it is described in the, uh, in the last uh, uh, last minutes of life so that anima that essential nature that subtle essence is is the atman saha atma and then aitadatnya midam sarvam so idam sarvam this entire universe Uh, which is a, a collection of nama and rupa in one perspective but otherwise it is nothing but a series of phenomena and the, the entire universe itself is one single phenomenon we can look at it like that therefore when you, because it has a birth and it stays for a while in the in the shape in which it it appears and then it resolves so that is how a phenomenon is defined it is only a matter of time scale whether it is small or big in the when the time scale is small it is easily understood that it is a phenomenon and so unreal and therefore it is mithya and the reality is something else that is easily understood uh, in a case, in the case of a wave etc but when we have a bigger time scale it becomes difficult to appreciate that it is unreal but a uh, time scale may be small or big finally it, uh, it it amounts to the same so adavante che yannasti vartamane che tat tatha in the beginning it was not there and it will disappear in the time scale after a while and you say it is there in the middle now whatever appears in the middle it is just an appearance only it is not the reality because reality cannot come into existence and cannot uh, disappear into something else that is not what reality is what is is and that remains same in all the three periods of time namely past present and future that is what is called reality therefore wherever you have a thing which is time bound and uh, we have to understand straight away that it is mithya this is the definition of mithya mithya means unreal so uh, fake <laughs> so that is mithya so this uh, another very inter- there are many definitions for mithya definitions in the sense we try to describe it in a given perspective as the perspective changes the language also varies but finally the thing is one and the same so from the point of view of time scale we just give a minimum a definition in minimum words we don't want to give many words that is not how a definition is given whatever in whatever begins in time is mithya you need not say whatever begins in time and then ends later is mithya because <laughs> that is not necessary to say because the moment you say whatever begins it is understood that it will end 
So that is a law. And so it is mithya. This is the definition of mithya. You don't need any further analysis, discussion about it. Part. Now, this part, did it have a date of birth? Yes, obviously. Then it is mithya. Over. No discussion about it. Necklace, it is mithya. Gold, in the same context, gold doesn't have a date of beginning. I mean, with reference to necklace, the gold doesn't have a date of beginning. Because the gold did not start on the date when necklace started. Okay, gold is real. So, this is how we understand about the mithya. So, now let us know whether this universe has a beginning or not. Yes, then it is mithya, over. Period. No more discussions. So, uh, it is like that. Anyway, so then uh, if the jagat is mithya, then what is the real? Aitadatnyam idam sarvam. So, all this universe, idam sarvam, sarva means all. You know what is this all? It can be all phenomena, if the person has got that vision. Or it can be, in a very gross way, it can be all objects. So, all these objects have this sat, sadekame vadhitiyam, that sat, as their atma, aitadatnyam. Etata atma yashante ata sarvam yashyatat. All this has this sat as the atman. What is this atma? Atma means yatha atmiyam ar yatha thata ar satatvam. These are the Sanskrit Vedantic words. So, the reality, the essential content. I am giving a few English words which I use very often. So, the matrix the underlying reality, this is what is called Atma. So, this Atma, the Atma of this entire universe uh, is one and the same. It's not that every object has got one different Atma. It's not like that. So, even from the point of view of Tejobanna, if you look at an object, say the sun, it is a, it is made up of Tejobanna, moon Tejobanna. Only percentages vary. The earth, Tejo Banna, the entire universe is Tejo Banna. Therefore, you have to say, for every one of these objects, the Atma is Tejo Banna. And once again, just, we give Tejo Banna just as an intermediary step. Uh, otherwise, what happens, you know, suddenly you say, uh, you show a mountain and say, the Atma of this mountain is Sat. It becomes difficult. So, you tell the person that this mountain is made up of Tejobanna, yeah, he can easily appreciate it. Then you say Tejobanna is nothing but the Sat, tapered existence. Sat alone appears as Tejaha Napanam, over. Now the, correl the correlation or the relating becomes easy. So, Aitadatnya Vidam Sarvam. And uh, you see, when you have connected this entire universe to the Brahman or the Sat, to the reality, just uh, the person who makes this connection, he, he has to be taken into account. Then the whole equation is complete. <coughs> you see, why the person should be taken into account? All is taken into account. All is merged in Sat. Why you bother about the person? No, no, the entire Shastram is meant for the person. It is not meant for all. So, the, the person, the limited being, is the one who is addressed by the Shruti. The Shruti is not interested to prove something about all for the sake of all. The, all, the, the entire study, the entire teaching is addressed to the individual. It is, a, it is like that. Therefore, that individual, he has to now relate to this Ishvara and this universe in the newly, in the newly established reality situation. And then that becomes complete. Tattvamasi, in that sense, the Mahavakya, Tattvamasi comes. But before that, Tatsatyam, this also we have seen. So, Aitadatmya Vidam Sarvam, the Atma of the entire universe is Sat, and that is the only reality. The understanding of the universe has, as having its existence in Sat is the truth. So, Reality is what is. Understanding of what is, is truth. Satyam. That, that is the only difference. When the understanding comes into picture, it becomes a satyam. 
ओके दट सत इज देर दट सत इज दी आत्मा सहा आत्मा दट इज दी स्टेटमेंट विच वी हैव टू लुकिंग टू यू सी दिस सत इज अंडरस्टूड टू बी विज्ञानम दट वे वी हैव सीन इट इट इज दी अवेरनेस बिकॉज देर आर टू स्कूल्स ऑफ थाट इन दिस वर्ल्ड वन दे आल टॉक ऑफ ए सत and uh, that advaitam also they talk only some of these dualists who are, who who are nothing but the theologians of the world they talk of some plurality some silly plurality no scientists talk of plurality and no deep philosophers talk of plurality for example bauddhas they don't talk of plurality they talk of advaita cosmologists the modern scientists they talk of advaita advaita means non dual uh, reality that is advaita so the modern cosmologists talk of advaita of course we in vedanta talk of advaita all the time so like that uh, we are and uh, even uh, some of these philosophers like uh, aristotle ptolemy and all these people though they have studied different other subjects and their purpose is not to study the advaita parabrahma etc but still they all uh, talk of a non dual reality from which everything has originated so everybody with some sense of uh, understanding and rational talks of non dual reality only some of the theologians who spun their thinking power and uh, who who put themselves who fix themselves into a framework and uh, who don't want to come out of that framework Uh, and uh, what happens is uh, they get a commitment to that framework and that framework uh, that superstructure of superstition it becomes a vested interest also as long as he talks of this is silly faith spirit spirit came here spirit went there so as long as he talks this he has a following suppose uh, and that following is based on this uh, language suppose suddenly he stops talking that language then there will be no following and he can't afford it so he it become he becomes a prisoner of a language nothing else and so he will be talking some funny language i have seen them talking some funny language if you question it they will feel very offended and uh, they will never be convinced also because they are not open for anything they come with a closed mind and uh, so something they will be talking it won't make any sense whatsoever so except these dualists if you say we are talking of this duality for the purpose of upasana god bless you you are right but they don't talk like that so they don't have upasana in mind in any case so except for these dualists everybody talks of a non dual atma okay non dual brahman now yeah what i was saying is there are two schools of thought one thought is in fact you can say three one is the non dual reality is inner is a insentient thing it is it is called jada advaitam it is insentient these are the modern day cosmologists and when they say it is insentient not that they are committed to the statement or they have examined it and it and they say it is not that that is not the reason that is not their commitment you see they function in what is called a scientific method so scientific method consists of observing the planets and galaxies and stars etc through telescope and note down the observations and make some conclusions that is the scientific method and on that basis they function and so it is not uh, it doesn't come under their scope to say something about uh, consciousness for that reason they don't tell much nowadays they are talking they are they also started talking other they are very sincere people they say this is what we can observe and uh, so we understand that the universe has originated from a single homogeneous ball of undifferentiated mass energy etc it is not differentiated we don't know anything about it except that mass and energy the way we know have originated from there that much only we know so this is how they describe which is quite wonderful this is what is called jada advaitam then bauddhas say it is it has originated from shunyam 
from void. This is a Shunya Dvaitam. So, these two are not acceptable to us. We say that this universe has originated from Sat, which, which is Vijnanam. In fact, uh, many Mahatmas, uh, some, some, especially Ramana Bhagavan and a few other Mahatmas of that caliber, they say, if you understand the Sat, irrespective of chit, I mean sat alone is understood and no chit association is there. That kind of a situation doesn't exist at all. They say there can be no sat without chit. That is, that is how they try to explain it, which is, a, which makes a lot of sense. Because you know, what we, how we look at it, we say an object, you please think about it, an object doesn't exist on its own, in its own right. Part is there. We say part has no existence in its own right, because the existence has to be validated. And how to validate? If part raises up and says, I am the part, probably that is one kind of validation. But part doesn't say that. Part doesn't proclaim itself to be part. Then uh, how to validate its being part? No, no, I say it. I say that it is part. Yeah, that is what we mean only. Therefore, without this I, without this seer, there is no part. The seer has to see the part and validate it that it is the part. That has to be done, otherwise there is no part. So, now, so part is a sat, you know, part means part is, asti, ghataha asti. So that easiness, namely this sat, has to be validated by a chetana purusha. Now, how the chetana purusha validates it? Will he stand apart from the part and validates it? No, that way he can never validate it. As long as the part stands apart from me, part, can, part cannot be validated. What has to happen? The part has to be imprinted on the mind through the sense organ. And finally, what I see is not the part outside. What I see is the mental part. The mind which has now modified into the part form, that is what I see. I don't see the part outside. There is no way of seeing the part outside. From outside the light rays fall on the retina and so a mental part I see. Therefore, when I validate that it is part, that part is a mind modification, a thought it is, a thought frame. And as a thought frame, it is never different or isolated from the Chaitanyam in which it arises as a wave. Therefore, the Namarupa of the part, which, see, which validate the partness, so they exist as a thought frame in the ocean of consciousness. <coughs> Only when this happens, you have a, a statement, part is, so part gets validated. Therefore, nobody should be under the impression that there are things outside, is, and a, the knower is inside, asti is outside, bhati is within. It is wrong. In fact, this outside-inside problem came because of identification with the body. If the body line could be ignored in some, how, in some way, then what is outside and what is inside? This outside-inside thing is with reference to the body line. And this body line is a funny thing it is. It is also outside in a sense. Therefore, you just think about it, the entire universe, including the body, is outside, because it is an object of my understanding, this I told earlier. Or, the entire universe, including the body, is within me, because it arises as a thought or as a disturbance in me, the awareness. Therefore, either everything is external, including the body, or everything is internal, including the body, around the universe. So this is the way we have to understand. Therefore, you can never separate the Sat, the existence, from the Chit. 
Me is chit, you know, inside means chit. So, the sat is chit, chit is sat. Therefore, Shruti doesn't care to put an adjective there. Sadegame vadbhutiyam it says. Because it is talking of the origin of the universe. And the universe is taken to be a thing which is. And therefore the entire emphasis is on ease. And the easiness. So it is sat. But then this sat is nothing other than chit. That aspect Shruti doesn't care to say or explain at that point. It is now adding that aspect now, because now this sat has to be correlated with the seer, with the person, who is the one, uh, that is the jijnasu, who has to understand the reality and who has to come out of the samsara. Therefore, he, have, he, he is not just one more object or any such thing, he is the chaitanyam in which everything is shining. Therefore, now for the first time, the word atma is introduced. Till now, Atma is not, it has not come into the picture. You may say, Aitadatmya Midam Sarvam. That Atma is not, it is used in a different sense. There, Atma is the essential reality. Here, Atma is you. You, the knower. So, Sa Atma. In fact, Saha is that. That Sat, Sat, Sadekame Vadvitiyam. So, that Sarva Jagat Karanam. Sat, that Brahman, that is you, Tattvamasi, Saha Atma, that happens to be the Atma. You see, once you understand this Atma correctly, then only Tattvamasi becomes meaningful. Otherwise, Tattvamasi remains as an equation unknown to me. Therefore, a Saha Atma, first the student is introduced to what is called Atma, and once he understands Aitadatmya Midam Sarvam on one side and Saatma on the other side, then the equation will be appreciated very well. So Aitadatmya Midam Sarvam, it is what is called Tattvadartha Sodhana. Means what you think the universe to be is wrong. The universe, the way you understand, it requires a modification. In, in your understanding, a modification is required because there is an error in your understanding. That error has to be removed. This is what is called shodhana. Shodhana means a cleaning. So, your understanding of the universe is, is cleansed in a way. And now you will have correct understanding. Then, uh, uh, that is the first step to be done. Therefore, you see what people think, saha means ishvaraha. Or Tat is Brahman. Anyway, you can use, here all the genders are used. It is used as Saha, which is masculine, Sa, Devata, feminine, and Tat, Tatvamasi, Tat, which is neuter. All the genders are used, because we have already left this gender far back. This gender problem is there only with theologians, I suppose. They, they claim that the God is a male. So, it is uh, something very funny. Uh, I, I don't want to go into the details of it because it looks uh, very ridiculous. Because you, you, you are now trying to understand the Sarva Jagat Karanam Brahma and still you want that Sarva Jagat Karanam Brahma to be male. And you say that it is male and then say that, that, um, that male God has done something and all that. Anyway, so we leave this gender complex behind much behind. In fact, what we say, the gender applies to the physical body. Definitely it applies to the physical body. And uh, except the physical body, uh, there is no gender in, a, in any other level. Annamaya is, a, is associated with gender in a given sense. Looking from the, looking, it, looking at it as the food body, you, then also gender doesn't apply really. But still, you can talk of a gender at the Annamaya level. When it comes to prana, gender has no relevance anymore. Over, gender's role is complete there. It won't apply in prana anymore. Because prana is life, the vital energy of the physical body. It is common to male and female. Then sense organs, they, their gender doesn't apply. Eyesight, eyesight has no gender. And then the manaha, the emoting personality, their gender doesn't apply. Uh, uh, 
you can't say that uh, women are more emotional than men. Even if you say in certain emo- certain areas, uh, that is a very superficial description. It is not intrinsic to the personality or any such thing. We have any number of women who are more uh, uh, courageous and all that. In fact, in India we used to have a proverb. We used to have Indira Gandhi, you know, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. She was a great leader. And uh, so they used to say in her uh, rule, there is only one man in Indira Gandhi's cabinet. You know, cabinet has got 25 members, 25 ministers, like secretaries here in this country. So there is only one man in her cabinet, and that man is Indira Gandhi. <laughs> that is what they used to say. <laughs> so, anyway, the gender doesn't apply when it comes to the mind and the intellect. Just it doesn't apply to the intellect. And uh, at the level of aham, leave alone gender, the humanness itself doesn't apply. We say the ayam of a human being and the ayam of an animal is one and the same. That is how we look at it. The animal has a sense of I, I-ness associated with its existence and that I-sense in its pure form is not different from the I-sense of a human being. No, no, I am a human being, it is an animal. Yeah, you have added something already to the I. That's why you find a difference. This human beingness is added to I. Human beingness is not the property of the I. It is the property of the body. Therefore, unless you add something to the I and thereby contaminate it, you cannot establish a, a, a difference. Therefore, where is the question of gender applying at the level of I? It just doesn't apply. And this I is mitya in any case. I has its existence in the awareness. So, where I left gender? At least five stages below I have left it. I don't even remember at what level I left it. Now there is no gender anymore. So, Atma. Then why you use Saha? Saha, this Atma happens to be Pumlinga in Sanskrit language. We go by grammar. So, uh, and in the grammar, the gender has no connection with the meaning always. Both can coincide, like Ramaha, Lord Rama, he is a male, and the word Ramaha is also masculine. It's a coincidence. In a different place, Vrukshaha, tree, it is, a, it is not a male, tree is a neuter in any other language, but in Sanskrit, the word Vrukshaha is masculine. It doesn't mean the tree is masculine. The word Vrukshaha is masculine. Therefore, it is like Meghaha. Meghaha means the cloud. It is masculine. Vidyut means the lightning. It is feminine. So, like that. It has nothing to do with the meaning. The gender is not determined by meaning. I am saying, somebody should not misunderstand that Atma is Pumlingam. Uh, so, masculine gender, therefore the Atman must be male. It should not be like that. So, that kind of a silly mistake should not be there. So, Atma. Then, uh, Saha Atma. So, Atma means you really, not you the way you take yourself to be. The you which is correctly understood. That is Atma. We will see that. This is called Tvampadartha Sodhana. So, the Tat has to be understood correctly. In our understanding, Tat means a God sitting somewhere. This is what is called Parokshatvam. Tat is necessarily taken to be not local, not around. It is paroksha. Tat means paroksha. You know what is paroksha? Not, not seen before us. Not available for perception. That is called paroksha. Pratyaksha means available for perception. Paroksha means not available. Therefore, God must be somewhere in the heaven or Vaikuntha, etc. So, that is God. Tat means that. That's why they show up also. So, that tat... And by the time you do shodhana of that tat, what happens, you know, the parokshatvam of God is gone. The parokshatvam is there, non-availability, God is not around. So that kind, that kind of an understanding is there only in the absence of proper, proper investigation. By the, that in, shodhana is investigation. So by the time we do proper investigation and appreciate the Godhead properly, it is no more paroksha. Because, you know, the problem is, as long as 
God or Tat is understood to be Paroksha, the equation won't fit. Here the equation is between Paroksha and Pratyaksha. So first the Parokshatvam has to be knocked off. So how to knock off the Parokshatvam of the God? Aitadatnyam idam sarvam. So this sarvam, idam sarvam, this universe, it is not Paroksha, it is Pratyaksha. So the universe which is before you, with which you are interacting day in and day out. So this universe has the Parabrahman, the so-called Paroksha Brahman as its Atma, as its underlying reality. That means the Parabrahman's Parokshata, it's being uh, somewhere away, non-available for my perception, that Parokshata is not enough because the Parabrahman is where I see the world. Aitadatmyam idam sarvam. That establishes Parabrahma's aparokshatvam. This is what is called aparokshanubhuti also. Unless you establish this aparokshata, you cannot have an equation. Tattvamasi will not be possible. That sits there and you sit here. How can be an equation between you two? So the, the that should be brought down from that higher position, that, uh, that uh, paroksha sthiti, from the status of being non-available for perception, from that status it has to be brought down to the level of parok, pratyaksha. Therefore, aitadatnya midam sarvam. First, you just keep away this idea from the mind that God is somewhere above, He is not local, etc. God is in and through everything that you see, that you hear. So, you are in, indeed you are living in the lap of divinity. This is Aitadat Nyamidam Sarva. Then, Tatpadartha Sodhana he is done. Now you have to do a little Tvampadartha Sodhana. You have to understand yourself. Because, no, no, I know myself. No, you don't know yourself. Because you have, a, you, you take yourself to be a person, right? You take yourself to be a person. Now, what is this person? I tell you what it is. You have an image of yourself. And this person whom you take yourself to be is nothing more than that image. For example, I take myself as a professional engineer, father of two children, owner of a house, owner of a car, husband of a lady, and son of so-and-so, Amushya Putraha, Shankara. I am son of so-and-so. This is what I am. I, this is what I take myself to be. So, every one of these are nothing but uh, images of yourself that you have. I am the son of so and so. It is an image. It is an information passed on to me. And I take it. And uh, nothing wrong in it. We have to take it. I am not saying you apply, you appoint a detective agency to verify and all that. That is not my point of view. What I am saying is... Uh, you just take an information and just adopt it and somehow live with it. So you are living with it and so uh, you, the, the, and you never question it. Nobody is son, nobody is father. Kaste putraha, kaste pita, samsaroya mativa vichitraha. This is what Shankara says. He says this samsara is very vichitra it is. Very dumbfounding it is. Very confounding whatever they say. So, because somebody says he is the father and somebody else he says he is the son. In my opinion, I don't see any father-son relationship because these are all mithya. If a person cares to study Panchagni Vidya, this idea of father-son will be knocked off. What father-son? You see, Shankara asks in a different place, you see, you say he is your son. You and your wife together consulted him to bring him forth into this world as a son? Is that the way you have done? Or he consulted you to come into this life, uh, into this world as your son? No. no. No consultation. It is purely accidental that so and so individual happens to be, uh, happens to take birth at that time uh, in this fashion. Right? Or uh, there was any prior consultation between the two individuals? There is no consultation. So, in fact, the mother conceives not by any volition or not by any planning. So, 
it is all accidental at the best you can say or you can say all these uh, events are happening under the guidance of a higher power that is all one can say so the woman conceives under the guidance of a higher power and the cell grows into a fetus and further into a good child not uh, under the volition or the uh, or the deliberation of the mother it happens on its own the birth also happens on its own and uh, the food is available in the nature and uh, so we just happen to be instruments of uh, carrying this food to the child and so the child grows and uh, so i am not this body in the first place but uh, a child who has originated from this body i take him to be my son so samsaroya mativa vichitra it is uh, we never care to investigate it in fact for the child to take shape and take birth there are five agents in the entire sequence there are five agents and one of those five agents is the mother and one more agent is the father therefore and there are three other agents in the entire sequence and we conveniently disregard all those three and take up the responsibility of this child coming into this world entirely upon ourselves we claim that we have brought this child into this world which is wrong because I, I, as i told you if you have brought that child into this world did you consult that child did the child consult you did you plan it that way did you implement it with your own uh, effort and all that no there is nothing every event involved in the entire process of birth of a child starting from this journey of this child from heaven to this point it is all uh, under uh, happening under the guidance of a higher power and you happen to be there ramana maharshi used to give an example you see in indian temples uh, there is one figure sitting at the foundation and the entire temple which is 100 meters uh, high or whatever so that the temple is there it is standing uh, in a, and it has got its strength of standing in pillars etc will be there but this small figure will be there at the gate at the entrance this figure uh, it looks as if it is carrying the entire temple on its head that figure looks like that the artist <laughs> he sculpts that figure that way so that figure a small figure a chota figure it will be holding this head like this <laughs> and uh, it looks uh, the facial features also look as if it is carrying a heavy load i tell you if you just give one hammer uh, one ha- one time hammering that figure it crumbles it is just sticking on to the whole structure in a corner and you just uh, hold it uh, strongly and pull it out it will come out nothing will happen to the structure structure is not even disturbed by an iota and the figure can be pulled out but that figure thinks that it is carrying the load of the entire structure it looks like that so we also are like those figures we feel that i am the father i am doing all this i am this i am that so many i tell you it is all wrong therefore what i am trying to say where i started you take yourself to be a person and that person which you consider yourself to be is nothing more than image of yourself that you have and that image is wrong this is what i am trying to say because that image is constituted by a few ideas like i am the father i am the son i am the professor so such a few ideas together come to come together they they come together into a bundle and the, this bundle it includes or it encloses a nucleus a fake nucleus which is called a person therefore there is no person ears they function and you have a process of hearing and you say it is me who hears so like this so this person is wrong this person which is i don't say who also which only i will say because it is an image this person which is nothing but an image okay is that image is stand for a while at least i say this image of yourself that you have for yourself is such a vulnerable image so a bacteria can crush that image and 
a stock market upsurge or downward trend can destroy that image what kind of image it is so it is such a vulnerable image if the breakfast is not forthcoming this image receives a beating and so i am no more comfortable with myself that means my image is already shaking and and also this image it varies from period to period the image which i had about myself in childhood is not there now it is no more that image that is totally transformed i don't know when it is transformed also then in the young age i used to be a different person another image and that is totally gone now i have a more mellowed image so some funny image i have about myself and this image will you just look 10 years ahead and just think one can think for himself after 10 years will i be holding on to the same image <laughs> certainly not so what image you are talking about as a person there is no clean cut stable image also it varies on a daily basis or even on an hourly basis therefore there is no real image in fact we say you have not ever not yet discovered your individuality because whatever individuality you are holding on to assuming that to be yourself is varying in such a fast pace it is not real because a thing which varies on a daily basis how it can be real it is not real and uh, it, it is not worth holding on to and uh, then uh, then uh, the question remains what am i <laughs> if the image which i hold on to is not me then what am i yeah you should know it then you tell me we will know it yeah i will not tell you what are you but i can tell you what you are not <laughs> that is all i can do therefore you are not that image then what am i i i cannot tell you what you are i can only tell that you are not that image if you have any further ideas about yourself i can assure you all those ideas are wrong then the question remains what am i there is one question in this universe which has no answer which which cannot be answered in an explicit fashion in so many words it cannot be answered therefore that question remains like that what am i because what am i cannot be answered in a descriptive way by the time you try to answer it with a description it proves to be wrong because i is the prama i uh, the, the i is the pramata who knows everything who describes everything who sees everything how the the essential nature of that pramata the awareness which sits behind that pramata and makes the pramata wield these pramanas to know things how that can be made an object of all these pramanas no way then what to do how to proceed with it you you don't proceed with it you need not proceed with it what all you have to do is you process that false image and by the time that false image is knocked off it is demolished what remains is you and that need not be described because it is not possible to describe it you you will not know it because it is yourself how i can know myself suppose you ask me do you know swami tatvavidananda what answer i have to give I, there is no answer that for for that question i will not give any answer because you know i cannot say i know swami how i can know swami swami happens to be myself therefore i cannot a thing which is other than me i can know therefore i cannot say i know swami then okay then you say i don't know swami how i can say that i cannot say i don't know swami because i happen to be the swami how i can say i don't know swami there is a gentleman whom i don't know he is living his own life and with reference to him if you ask me then i will say yeah i don't know him but how i can say that with reference to myself okay then you say i know and don't know are how it is possible to say that you cannot say i know and don't know about a thing it is not possible to say then what you will say i will not say anything i will not answer that question that question is not answered similarly 
यू नीड नॉट आंसर द क्वेश्चन वॉट एम आई जस्ट नो दिस मच वॉट एवर इज एडेड टू आई आम इज फॉल्स एंड वॉट रिमेन्स एज द अल्टिमेट रियालिटी आफ्टर डिमोलिशिंग ऑल द फॉल्स आइडियाज दट इज आत्मा बट फॉर दर्पज दट इज वॉट आई आम एंड फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ डिस्कशन वी हैव टू गिव ए नेम टू इट अदरवाइज ए शास्त्र हैज टू इंडिकेट इट विथ ए वर्ड शास्त्र इज ए कलेक्शन ऑफ मीनिंगफुल वर्ड्स एंड नाउ वी हैव एन एंटिटी विच कैनॉट बी डिस्क्राइब्ड इन एनी इन एनी पॉजिटिव वे यू इट डजेंट हैव एट्रीब्यूट सपोज इट हैज एन एट्रीब्यूट द एट्रीब्यूट बिकम्स ए लीवर टू डिस्क्राइब इट बट इट इज ए एट्रीब्यूट लेस इट इज अ कर्ता देर फॉर आई कैनॉट शो एन एक्शन एंड से द कर्ता ऑफ दिस एक्शन इज दैट इट इज अभोक्ता and uh, so it is not available for words it is not available for any of these pramanas like pratyaksha etc so but you can say all this about it right all this is said about that only and so for the purpose of convenience uh, we have used a name for it that name is atma somewhere in chandogya upanishad bhashyam only shankara describes this word atma he he says what is this atma you say on one side it is not available for words and now you say it is atma so it is available for words how you say it is not available for words like that he starts a discussion and says something which i have now described to you in an action it will be really very worth looking into that bhashyam also but still i have given you the essence of it so for the sake of convenience because shastra has to proceed to help the person shastra has to help him in neutralizing the false image that will be possible only when the ultimate reality which is sat is pointed out by a word all the time otherwise with reference to that you have to demolish all this uh, so uh, uh, that has to be referred to by a given word and therefore we universally use in universally in the sense in the entire vedantic literature in the entire vedic literature we use the word atma sa atma so that the sat sarva jagat karanam brahma that sadekame vadvitiyam that is atma atma is not the image or person that you hold on to that you take yourself to be that is not atma atma is so the the reality after eliminating all these false ideas about oneself that is atma then uh, this word atma it is not uh, some half a zard word picked up from somewhere to indicate that reality which cannot be described in words it is not like that even while picking up a word for a thing which cannot be described in words the shruti utilizes uh, some some understanding and the uses A, a very beautiful word with a wonderful etymology and all that therefore this is an occasion to know the meaning of the word atma so once again by the time you know the meaning you will not be knowing atma as one more object uh, you will be knowing atma as a, as not an object but the awareness in which every object shines the awareness in which all ideas rise so that way you will know it and so we have a, a beautiful verse quoted by shankara in kathopanishad bhashyam i have verified yesterday i originally thought it is from aitareya but it is from katha kathopanishad has described it so in kathopanishad dvitiya adhyaya pratham avalli there is a mantram called paranchi khani yatrunat svayam bhuh tasmat parang pasyati nantaratman like that a description is there there the word atma is there kaschid dhirah pratyagatmanam ikshat avrutta chakshur amrutatvam ichan that is the verse there the word atma is there also in that bhashyam shankara has quoted uh, this atma shabda nirvachanam the definition of the atma shabda from another source the source is vishnu purana i think so the verse is like this this is quite often quoted by students of vedanta yachapnoti यदादत्ते यच्चाति विषयानिहा यच्चास्य संतो भावः 
तस्माद आत्मेति कथ्य थे सो नाउ वी हैव टू वी हैव टू टॉक अबाउट दट सत फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ दिस पर्सन वट इज द पर्सन रिलेशनशिप विद दट सत दट इज द वे इन विच द वर्ड आत्मा कम्स इन टू द पिक्चर यू सी द पर्सन वेन यू टॉक ऑफ ए पर्सन ही हैज थ्री स्टेट्स ऑफ एग्जिस्टेंस वन इज जागृत द सेकंड इज स्वप्ना एंड सुषुप्ति सो दीज स्टेट्स वेकफुल स्टेट एंड डिजायर ड्रीम स्टेट एंड स्लीप स्टेट वी विल हैव सम डिस्कशन अबाउट दीज स्टेट्स इन दीपावली वेदांता रिट्रीट ऑल्सो देर द टॉपिक हैपन्स टू बी दीज फ्रॉम बृहदारण्य का एनीवे सो वॉट वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड इज ईच स्टेट ईज nothing but a series of experiences that way you have to understand in fact it is first necessary to know that the wakeful state consists of not objects as such but the experiences thereof that way you have to know you see people uh, they fail to recognize this fact on their own they cannot figure it out unless shastra teaches you see we understand that i wake up from the sleep and so now i come into a waking state and there are many objects in the world this is how it just appears and we take it to be true but uh, it is a description all right you can always say that nothing wrong but it is a very empirical statement the reality is the waking state is not constituted by objects and objects and objects it is constituted by experiences and experiences and experiences there is a difference between an object and experience object has to be has to become a a, a modification has to reflect in the atma chaitanyam then only it acquires the status of an experience for example a sweet is there as long as it sits in the counter or in a packet it is not sweet with reference to what it will become when you experience it you are calling it sweet even sugar it is sweet only when you put it on the tongue and only when it becomes an object of your experience and if suppose before the discovery of sugar there were human beings before discovery of sugar there were human beings just imagine a situation like that equal is there if not sugar equal is there before the discovery of equal uh, there were human beings right now, you know so before the discovery of sugar there were human beings and uh, they may be looking at this object sugar also but they don't know the it as a sweet enough unless one gentleman tasted it and said it has got a very peculiar taste which we have no, not known till now like discovery of coffee how coffee is discovered this is how it is discovered some goats were eating this coffee leaves and after eating the coffee leaves in africa they got very excited and they were more happy earlier they were very dull and all that so this uh, this shepherd fellow he noticed it why they are so active and suddenly why they are so enthusiastic there was be something behind it so he carefully followed them and observed them because they are coming again and again to the same spot every day so they noticed that they are eating a particular herb he picked it up that herb and he ate it too and he felt some enthusiasm in himself and that is the discovery of coffee then uh, the herb, instead of eating dry wet leaves it is better to eat dry leaves and it is better to make a decoction and drink it rather than eating the leaves because it is all nonsense so that is what is happening in the mouth anyway when you eat a leaf then what happens its decoction is extracted by the salival juices so why not do it outside and drink it so like that all discoveries have added later therefore there is no coffee until and unless you experience it so what i am trying to say is all waking state is a series of experiences that way you have to know it this is what is called trying to uh, trying to understand what seems to be outside is not really outside it is within me this fact has to be understood 
people live in this in this brahma in this delusion that there is a world outside and they live in this world which is wrong the reality situation is there is there is you you are there and in you the world exists that is the reality therefore now what i have to do the objects which are supposed to be outside i convert them to be what they really are namely their experiences so by the time you convert an object into an experience already you have achieved one half of the job namely transferring the world into you now when you say it is experience is it outside or is it in me it is in me therefore the wakeful state is a series of experiences okay what is an experience we get up and have a cup of coffee then take bath bath is an experience you feel more fresh like that everything is an experience so all these experiences put together you get tired you experience so much that you tired that you are tired mind and indriyas everything is tired now you go to sleep that is one more experience so anyway so each one of these experiences in the waking state what is its reality you see an experience is possible only when experiencer is there in the absence of an experiencer there cannot be an experience right now so from experience i am now coming to experiencer all inward looking approach it is object i convert to experience now i connect the experience to the experiencer now i will ask you a question what is the relationship between the experience and the experiencer very obvious there is no experience without the experiencer there can be the experiencer without the experience for example in sleep you are there and nothing else which has fed all these experiences is there therefore you as the as the matrix of the experiencer matrix of the experiencer can be there all the time and the experiences they can come and go come and go they are transient but you with reference to them you stand always there in fact i tell you if you try if you understand it this is the situation is like this it is the experiencer who imparts his reality to every experience it is the experiencer alone who appears as experience when i put a sweet on my tongue me the person is so totally transformed into that experience of uh, that uh, taste so an entire person is transformed into that uh, experience therefore me the person that's why my if my mind is elsewhere i will not be able to experience this sweet taste also or when i am sleeping in where i am when i am deep in deep sleep you put some sweet ball push some sweet into my mouth i will not be able to experience it because i have to put me behind the sense organ and also behind the particular interaction with the object and i have to become that entirely then only there is an experience possible therefore it is me the experiencer who makes any experience possible it is me who imparts reality to these these experiences therefore without me there is no jagrat there is no waking state it is me appearing as the waking state it is like one light passing through various films as they move one after another in a sequence this one light will be illuminating or film frame after film frame and you have a series of events appearing on the screen similarly this atma chaitanyam it it uh, illuminates vasanas of uh, the mind and uh, it imparts chaitanyam or consciousness to every all sense organ and thereby it illuminates all the objects of the world and then you have all the waking state experiences like even you just can't have a movie in the absence of a projector light a light brightly brilliantly shining within the projector you can't see that 
even the projector operator cannot see it unless he really opens it so that bulb that light is shining inside the projector and then only as long as it shines the a movie which is a series of events is becomes possible similarly jagrat avastha is like a movie experience after experience they are coming and going and coming and going and this movie is made possible by the chaitanyam and that chaitanyam is the atma so yachapnoti yada datte yachati vishayani ha that yachati vishayani ha is the jagrat avastha yacha apnoti is the dream state yacha yat adatte is the wake for uh, the remaining state sleep state so this i will continue in tomorrow's class om purnamada purnamidam purnahat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 hari hi om shri gurubhyo namaha हरि ओम तत्सत श्री कृष्णार्पणमस्तु